Thank you all for coming. So this is our third COME webinar. And today we're talk it's entitled Around the Chanter Stand with Presbyteto Stacy Dorrance. And today we're just gonna be kind of having a discussion, open discussion about anything that comes up in your music ministry at your church. And we're very happy to have Presbyteta here. I'm gonna um, give you a little bit of introduction to who she is and I have something I wanna share on my screen at the same time. So let me see if I can do that. Okay, so um, here's a little introduction to Presbyteta Stacy. So she's originally from Denver, Colorado, and uh, she has been steeped in liturgical music her whole life because she's the child of a choir director and a church organist. So I'm pretty sure she grew up in the choir loft and then started <laughs> singing as soon as she could. Um, <clears throat> she is married to Father Theodore Dorrance, and they have been at St. John the Baptist in Beaverton, Oregon for 20 years. They have four children and three grandchildren. And Presbyterian Stacy is part of the chanting trio Icona, and they have 10 CDs. And a lot of their CDs are really great resources for learning how to chant Byzantine music in English. So you can look those up on Icona.com. And uh, the reason I've invited Presbyteta to do this with us today is because she has so much experience uh, working with a really small choir. When she came to Beaverton to start the parish of St. John the Baptist, there weren't other chanters. And she had, you know, experience from seminary and growing up and she just kind of jumped right into it and learned a ton on the job. So um, I just feel like she's such a good resource for us to, um, you know, just wherever we're at, she has musical training, but she also didn't come to this with somebody, you know, training her exactly how to do it. And so she's learned a lot on her own and found a lot of resources herself. And um, she's just a really fabulous resource and understands that we're all at different levels. And um, sometimes we're starting with what we feel is like nothing. And so I just feel like um, she's a wonderful resource for us. And her goal is to be continually improving. So thank you, President <laughs> Stacey, for being with us. And look forward to everything that you have to share. Awesome. So I have to thank Tomaida for uh, pulling me into this. Um, it's a little out of my comfort zone, but I, I know it's a really good thing for me to do because I'm really passionate about chanting and helping others to chant. So I'm really excited about the opportunity, but um, I'm a little nervous, have to be honest. <clears throat> but that's why I thought if I saw some of your faces, I, if I see a smile, I just relax. You know, if you're looking into space, you know, you're not knowing who's listening and what they're feeling. So that's why I asked if a few of you, at least, I could see your faces. And it looks to me like there's eight participants, Tomaida, which means that four I can see and four I cannot, correct? <clears throat> so there's eight, yeah, in a di well, there's four in one screen and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten others besides okay. us. Okay, cool. So um, I, um, I'll just say thank you. Thank you for having interest in this and I hope that you enjoy and I want you to ask questions so that you do enjoy what we're talking about. I only want to speak to those things that are relevant to you. Um, I want to say on the get-go that I consider myself very much an everyday chanter. I don't consider myself a highfalutin um, trained chanter. I've learned along the way. My husband, I went to a Hellenic college for a year and a half, and so I was able to learn a lot then. And then my husband studied uh, to become a priest for four years, and so I was able to glean uh, more those years. And then as a choir, uh, we call myself the music director of my parish, these last 20 years, I've just learned a ton. I mean, I'm still learning. I'll learn till the day I die. It's just, there's so much there. And um, you just kind of have to dig in where you're at and, and start learning. So, but I thought before we even start, can we, can we have a little prayer, Tomaida? Yes, please. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I just thought we would, um, we can say the Lord and Master or our Father. Um, I'll just say a few little prayers here, okay? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord and Master of my life, take away from me the spirit of laziness, idle curiosity, love of power, and vain talk. But grant to me, your servant, the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love. 
Yes, Lord and King, grant me to see my own faults and not to judge my brothers and sisters, for you are blessed until the ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And before you keep going, Press, I just wanted to remind everybody, please type in questions as you have them in the chat window, yeah. and then we'll mm -hmm. um, be answering those as, as they come in. Awesome. <clears throat> so since I can see some of you, I thought it'd be nice to be a little bit interactive. And I thought that I would, uh, for those of you who can see, those of you who can't, that's okay, you'll hear it. We're going to start by chanting the Apolitikia of the 40 Martyrs of Sevasti. And... Uh, raise your hand if you are familiar with the St. Anthony's website. Divine Music Project. Awesome. Okay. So I'm just, let's think, remind me, how am I going to get that? So I, you can have it open on your um, web browser, or if you want me to just do it, I can do it also. Yes, you do. Okay. okay well, I can find it. Well, if I'm finding it, are they seeing me? Remind me how I'm doing this. Um, gonna... so share okay. screen. So I just shared my screen. Cool. So go to um, St. Anthony's. <clears throat> I know where we're going, so you can... The neon. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> and Western staff okay? Sure, that's great. It's a short little hymn today, but I thought it'd be nice to expose ourselves to this and remind ourselves what a beautiful, just doing the daily of Politique and how lovely that is. So we're going to get into first mode. And I just generally go, ni pa pa buga biga bu pa ni pa. Be thou entreated for the sake of the sufferings of thy saints, which they endured for thee, O Lord. And do thou heal all our pains, we pray, O friend of man. So I love the Holy Forty Martyrs, and um, just to kind of contemplate those words, those who suffered in that lake um, for the sake of Christ, and which they endured, and, and it's asking God to heal our pains. And so we know that if he worked it through the saints, he can work it through us. And I think that that's really the essence of a lot of these hymns, is it's teaching us how to think properly um, about ourselves, about God, about the saints, and how they influence and impact our salvation. So thank you, Tomaida. And then what we thought we would do is, um, I think I'm going to do the epistle first, okay, the epistle of the day. And I'm just, I, I don't have the end all on how to do the epistle, but I will, I will show you how I have come to, to know how to do it. Um, your own priest may do it uh, in a different way, which is totally fine. You should always follow your priest. So um, I'm going to actually walk through the steps of how I do the epistle, and then I'm going to chant it. Uh, Tacoma is going to hold it for me, and, um, and I'm going to just speak a little bit. Of course, we know what the epistles are. Most of them are written by St. Paul, but we have a lot of epistles, and I'm just going to read them through. We have Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemonos, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and Jude. And the reason I would take a moment to read that is because I think as Orthodox Christians, um, those of us who are chanting, reading, um, holding that office in the church at the chanter stand, I think it's really important that we ourselves read scripture and that we're familiar with the, with the scriptures, the epistles, especially if we're going to be chanting them. And it's a part of our life so that we're integrated in that way. So uh, in the screen before you, you're going to see March 9th, the Holy 40 Martyrs of Sebastia, the Prokimenon, uh, which we do not chant the way it's actually intended in the church. Um, we actually have shortened it and made it just an intonation but the Prokimenon actually is a, is a verse, is a, a, a small hymn, a verse, the small hymn, the verse. And, um, but we just do it, kind of chant it right through. So we'd say, You, O Lord, shall keep us and preserve us. Save me, O Lord, for the godly man has failed. Now, I actually go out into the middle of the solea, and I do that in front of the priest facing him. Okay, I don't chant my epistle from the chanter stand. I actually go into the middle of the church, and that's how I start. 
And um, just a, a small note before I begin, there are periods, there are commas, there are colons and semicolons in these epistles, and each is treated properly. At the end of a sentence, our voice should sound like we're coming to the end of a sentence. If it's a comma, we will, we will sound like we are still hanging in the air a little bit. Um, I think I treat a colon as a period and the semicolon, it just depends on how long the epistle is. But if you can see the screen, I do want you to take note of how I'm chanting it and what I'm doing at the different uh, period, commas, etc. Okay. <clears throat> So I start with my, my prokemenon. I'm facing the priest. The, and then I continue. <clears throat> the reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrew. So forgive me. He says, wisdom. Then I sing. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. And he says, let us be attentive. Then I turn around. And I face the congregation, and we actually have a little mic there because we have not very good acoustics at our church. So I face the congregation. I'm standing in the middle of the salaya, and I'm chanting this. <clears throat> Brethren, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against yourself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Sorry, that should have been a period. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and have forgotten the exhortation which addresses, his, addresses you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor lose courage when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines him whom he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure God, that you have to endure. Nope. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father? And the priest says, Peace to you who read it, who readeth. And then I say, And to your spirit. And then the choir chants, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And then generally, I chant the first verse of the Alleluia, which is usually down below. I don't know if we have one. It might yeah. say something like, rejoice in the Lord always, rejoice. And then the choir would chant, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And then I would chant a verse, for his mercy endureth forever. And then the choir would chant, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So the Alleluia actually belongs not to the epistle, but to the gospel. But since you're doing it at the same time, I thought I would just kind of show you how that's done. Yeah, and I can show you where that is. So this is the oh, yeah. epistle book that we use at St. John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it can be found at Holy Cross uh, Press or Holy Cross Bookstore in Brookline, Massachusetts. And um, so this is what the epistle would look like for March 9th. And then the Alleluia that Prezi Tedder was talking about is at the top of the page here. 
And what's tricky about the Alleluia is it looks like it's just one verse, but it's actually two verses usually divided by a period. So you just do the one line, you do your Alleluia first, you do the one line, you do your Alleluia again, you do the second verse, and then you finish with the final Alleluia. Why I like it, we haven't always traditionally done this in our churches, even though it's actually the tradition. Why I like it is because it elevates the gospel. And that's what it's for. And our, we'll talk about later about the place of Psalms in the church, but there's a great place in the church for Psalms. And so we want to include as many as we can for that. So um, are there any questions that anybody wants to write about what we've, like the epistle? Are we good? Should I move on, Tomaita? Or... Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Any questions that you have? And you can just unmute someone if they have a question. That's fine. Right. Okay. So I think somebody's typing on for us. <laughs> so um, nod your head if that felt pretty, pretty basic or pretty normal. Is that similar to what you do? Is that similar to what you, you do? Oh, thank you for nodding your head, Prescott. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, it is so dark. I can't see them. Okay. Yes. Hi there. <laughs> so, um, one question was asked, how can we add the Alleluia back into our parishes when we are so set in their ways or when they are so set in their ways? Well, that's a really good question. Yeah. Okay. So I would say, start with your priest. Just ask him, how would you feel if we reintroduced the Alleluia as it's supposed to be done? Um, how would you feel about that? Would you think that it would be something that you would be in favor of? And then, you know, I would just start there. And if he's in favor of it, great. And if he's not, okay, you won't be doing that, which is fine. Which is fine. And then we have another question. Good question. I, um, that Sarah noticed that there is a tone mentioned or a mode mentioned up at the top of the Perkimenon. Mm -hmm. And is intoning ever done in different tones? You know, I don't, I've, I don't see it. I don't see it. I usually just see the... Um, I did mi pa buga, do re mi fa, na na da 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 da. I just do a kind of a major tone, and that's what I see and have heard traditionally. I've been fifty three years as Greek Orthodox in the Greek Orthodox diocese, and so that's kind of what I've seen. Um, so no, not generally. Mm -hmm. Which I, that's what I'm saying. The prokimenon, as it's supposed to be done, isn't done um, in the tone and uh, properly. It's done as an intonation as, that way. Yeah. Any other questions? I think that's it. We okay, cool. Going, and if we have more questions, we'll come back to them. Yes. Okay, so that kind of was that preparation. Um, I wanted to read you an inspirational reading. So I was so blessed. Some Presbyteria gave me this amazing little book. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was written by Constantine Cavernos, who I guess just died at St. Anthony's a few years ago. I don't know a lot about him, but um, I will tell you that this little book that he wrote, it's only 22 pages. And it's the most powerful reading on Byzantine chant that I have ever read and the most clearly understandable. And I thought for those of you who are hopefully in, interested in choral Byzantine music of the church, Greek Orthodox Church or whatever jurisdiction you happen to be a part of, I, I think it's really beautiful. So I'm going to read you a couple paragraphs from that. <clears throat> this was written in the 50s, so it's a little, little different than how we speak. If you're listening, um, I'll try to read clearly for you. Byzantine sacred music, which is the traditional official music of the Greek Orthodox Church, is characterized as far as its essence is concerned by simplicity or freedom from undue complexity, by purity or freedom from everything sensual, ostentatious, insincere, and by unsurpassed power and spirituality. I'm skipping a little bit here. The aim of this music is not to display the fine voices of the chanters or to entertain the congregation or to evoke aesthetic experience. Indeed, the chanters who sing it must have good voices 
and the chanting must be well executed and pleasant to hear. However, the good voices and the good execution are not things it seeks for their own sake, and the pleasure it evokes is not an end it deliberately seeks, but something incidental and further is not mere aesthetic pleasure, but something much richer and higher. The aim of Byzantine sacred music is spiritual. This music is, in the first place, a means of worship and veneration, and in the second place, a means of self-perfection, take note of that please, of eliciting and cultivating man's higher thoughts and feelings, and of opposing and eliminating his lower, undesirable ones. Okay. I don't know how many of you, when you think about Byzantine chant, if you think of it in those terms, that it's, first of all, of course, for worship and veneration. In the second place, self-perfection. It's really a strong word, isn't it? And then of eliciting and cultivating man's higher thoughts and feelings and of opposing and eliminating his lower, undesirable ones. And why I thought I would read that, and by the way, by means of speaking clearly, as we do that epistle, we want to enunciate clearly as we read. We need to enunciate clearly because we are a rational faith and we need to be understood by the congregation. So just as a side note, because I didn't say that with the epistle. Um, so music in the Orthodox Church is for this purpose. Number one, to worship God and to venerate the saints. Number two, to become like God. We call that theosis. But chanting hymns in the Orthodox Church changes us on the inside. Having wor holy words come out of our mouth in the setting of a, 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 any sort of a service is a holy thing. And it actually is making us holy. So I'm telling you this, why? Because you're musicians. And if you're being called to serve either in the choir, as a choir director, as a chanter, or as the head chanter, you are you are being called to something that sets you apart a little bit, and and you need to take that seriously. Okay, um, in regard to eliciting and cultivating man's higher thoughts and feelings, and of opposing eliminating his lower undesirable ones, being in church is a holy thing, and it changes us on the inside from the inside out. And it's a beautiful gift of God, and that's why we, we chant. That's why God and the Holy Spirit, they began with the Jews, this idea of, of chanting in the temple. They, did, they had a beautiful, probably a lot simpler, of the Psalms. And then as the Holy Spirit, as Jesus died, rose again, Holy Spirit came, the church began, and he started developing this beautiful um, style of using our bodies to glorify him and our and even in our mouth these whole uh -oh. okay so i think we have a little technical difficulty maybe prezutetta will log off and then come back on so if um, I, I noticed, Irene, that you asked a question about the epistles. So maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I, I, you know, waiting for her to come back. I, I think that um, we could ask her too, but I wouldn't say like it's bad. Um, so your question was, is it bad just to intone the precumen on the announcement of the epistle in the last few lines of the epistle and just read the rest of it? Um, I don't know if it's a matter of being bad or good, but I just... Um, I haven't seen that done, so I'm not sure it's like the tradition that we have. But again, like President Stacy said when we started, like follow your priest, and if it's something that he, you know, says like this is how I want you to read the epistle, then you know we can continue. You can continue doing it that way. So, okay. So she just texted me. She's coming back. Um, she's just having a little technical error, unfortunately. Okay, um, Sarah has a question, and it's for Presbyteta, but I'll read it out loud. 
Um, and then we can reread it when she comes back. Sometimes the mood behind the chant stand is anything but exalted and elevated. Do you have any tips on maintaining a spirit of worship while still being attentive to technical issues? Well, I think she's probably the best suited to answer this question for sure. But I, I would say like one thing that I would think about is just, I, I do think it's really important that, um, or it's better when we're in front of people. Like I noticed that the mood can really be, um, it can be difficult when you're in the choir loft or you're in a place where they don't see you and you feel like, oh, we're just getting a job done here. Um, but when you're in front of people, I've noticed that choirs tend to have a little more decorum. Um, and I think that the chanter stand is where there's a lot of temptation. And, um, you know, there, it's hard, like when you make a mistake, you know, or when others are doing like a really awesome job and there's, there's this conflict of like being prideful and trying to communicate while you're singing and all kinds of things that are happening. And so it's just a place where you have to have like an extra level of patience. And even when things are, are going poorly to say, this is, this is the norm for the chanter stand. This is nothing out of the ordinary. This is just what happens here. And so don't be alarmed by it. Um, and maybe that will help you also to um, get back to a place of kind of peaceful worship is, is just not to let it ruffle your feathers. So that's one answer I would give. And I really am um, looking forward to Prez's answer too. So um, do you have any questions about resources or anything that maybe we could talk about right now? I have, like I said, I have like a bunch of the books. I don't know if you all um, one thing I'm thinking about doing in the future ooh, is um, maybe doing like a, some, a series on how to read this beautiful Greek book, the Metalogion, because I think a lot of people get this book, you pay, um, your parish pays to have it delivered every year, and then it, it doesn't get the love and attention it deserves. Um, so this is a wonderful book that has, um, among other things, it has the rubrics for every day of the year, so for every service. So let me get to a page that's appropriate. So like this is the first page for August, and it's all in Greek. And so this can be a huge obstacle um, to have a book like this that you know is is very useful, but it's all in Greek. And so one of the things that I'm thinking about doing in the future is either myself or finding some others to kind of break down some of the main vocabulary for this book. Would that be helpful? Um, okay, so um, this really tells you what hymns to use. And whenever we're at the Chainer stand and we're going, oh my gosh, is it supposed to be Axionistin, which is, it is truly neat? Or is it supposed to be um, all creation rejoices? Or which hymn are we supposed to sing after communion? We, we always refer to this. And so just knowing those little Greek phrases and what they look like, oxionistine, um, or knowing, uh, you know, the, is it supposed to be the tr regular trisagion, holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, or is it supposed to be all who have been baptized? So knowing those, few key phrases will really help you and you can use this book. Um, so that's something we're going to work on in the future because this is a really great resource and it's, um, it can be just really fabulous. So one second, Prezi Teta is calling me, so I'm going to see if I can help her out. So Okay. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Everybody. I'm so sorry. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we lose anybody? Okay. So God wanted me to get off my high horse there. Okay. Stop that talking. 
Okay, so now the next, any, any questions so far? So one, one thing we were talking yep. about, um, so the first question was from Irene, back to the epistle about yes. intoning the Perkimenon, reading the epistle, and then intoning the end of the epistle. And right. she's wondering if that's something that's done. Okay, so this is my response. Ideally, it should be intoned. If you can intone the beginning and the end, my guess is you can intone the rest of it. But we get scared, and I totally understand that. Okay, so I would rather you at least intone the beginning and the end and read the middle, but I would actually have you challenge yourself and see if you can't, kind of based on what I was teaching you about, na 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 just kind of work through it. I, I teach the little kids at our school, at our church, it's called Aya Sophia Academy, how to intone the epistle, and they can totally do it. They can totally do it. So um, my guess is, there we go. My guess is if you challenge yourself, you just might be better at it than you think. And it does elevate it, and then it matches the um, gospel, which is usually intoned. However, if your priest doesn't intone the gospel, maybe, maybe that would match better not to do it. So, okay. Good. And then the next okay. question, and I, I gave um, a beginning of an answer, but um, you can, I know you can speak more to this, Prasitata, is from Sarah asking, you know, saying that sometimes the mood behind the chant stand is anything but exalted and elevated. Mm. Do you have tips on maintaining a spirit of worship while still being attentive to technical issues? A spirit of worship will still, yes. Okay, so why don't I go into my next segment, which is around the chanter stand? Would that be okay with everybody? Okay, so I'm just going to go into this, and we're going to totally address that again. You can ask me that question again in a minute. So in my, my church, the choir is all, are also the chanters. So um, we do probably 95% Byzantine chant, and maybe 5% a little four-part harmony here and there, something different, but mostly we're chanters. How we are set up is we have the men, the men on the left and the women on the right, and I'm the head chanter, and I have a head chanter on the left. And so we chant antiphonally. We all make a circle around the chanter stand, and they're all facing me. That's the way we set it up. And, of course, me being the leader and they accepting me as the leader, we don't have any issues. Sometimes when, there, when, when there's not a clear leader, that's when sometimes you get into issues. So it might be nice to choose someone or if possible to try to become more proficient yourself in being a leader. I know that's not always possible, but so we stand around we form a, a circle. I put my music on the music stand and then the two people next to me look at the music with me. And then the rest of the people around the chanter stand have their own music stands and they're following that music. We are all intentionally focused and prayerful. That's number one. We have to be focused on where we are in the service and we have to, inside of our hearts, each of us decide that we're gonna be prayerful. Right there, that sets the mood, okay? We don't judge. We never make a sour face if the priest does the wrong thing. We're respectful. We're serving God. We're with the angels, right? So we try not to talk excessively. Sometimes you have to talk. And sometimes you laugh a little bit. That's okay. We're human beings. We need to break the tension sometimes. Um, the leader gives clear directions during the services. He's past, she or he is pastoral, both to his choir and to the congregation. Sometimes I don't choose people to chant because I don't want to make the, the congregation suffer <laughs> on occasion. Sometimes I choose people that are better readers. But overall, I try to include everybody. I try to, I try to cater to every chanter in my choir's strength. Okay? That way they're not uncomfortable with what they're doing. Okay? When people aren't sure of themselves, then everybody in the whole congregation feels unsure of themselves. So we want to, as a leader, we want to be mindful of that. Um, I build, you want to build trust, you foster love and care so that that group of people up there chanting aren't like four strangers in the night 
next to each other. They're actually um, sisters and brothers in Christ serving him. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, the, the, the head chanter keeps a regular beat. Very, very important that we don't rush. We don't slow down. We just keep a steady, nice beat. He moderates, he or she moderates quality of the chanting, the volume of the chanting, and the pitch. And I do that with my hands, sometimes with my eyes. <laughs> it depends on what's happening. Um, that the leader has to know what's going on in the service and always what's next. And ideally should have an assistant who is really helping the with the order, like knows what's next. Okay, we need the communion hymn. We need the verses. We need to bring out the epistle. That other person can work with the leader to help um, keep things moving smoothly. Okay. And other things, I mean, we could talk about what a choir should do. The leader should organize choir practices, communicate with the, with the choir. Um, we have a question that might help you too. Um, can you share back to that other question too, Tomita? <clears throat> yes, I think that I think that's really helpful with the other question. And another question is, can you share a few of your hand motions, like for pitch or? Oh, tempo sure. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you know I have ESO, and everybody knows what ESO is. I hope it's the bottom um, drone note that's being held over the unison melody line. And if I'll move back a little bit here, if I want to. Um, everybody's like, this the one might be too loud. I'm like, bring it down, bring it down. If there's a pitch issue, sometimes I'm like this, listen, listen to each other. You're not chanting in tune. Um, if I want you to use words, maybe you're, you're singing, a, oh, but I want you to chant along with the words. I'll go like this, chant the words. Um, I, what I'm doing is I'm flapping my fingers for those of you who aren't seeing me like a duck, like move your, move your mouth. When I'm saying pitch, I'm putting my, my fingers by my ear and I'm rubbing them, like listen, listen to each other. When I'm asking people to sing more quietly, I'm bringing my hands down. If I want them to sing a little louder, I'm bringing them up a little bit, my fingers up, um, cutting off, you know, like a normal conductor does. Any other questions, any other hand motions I do, Tom? Um, I know one that, you know, that's really helpful is sometimes you're singing melody and this is a huge talent you have of being able to sing melody and then be able to direct Eason at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody can do that, but you'll do like, you know, you have like um, hand motions for where Eason is. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. while you're singing. Yes, and the director can, can bring the Eason up, bring it down. Sometimes they're hitting the wrong note. And you're like, ah, get up to the right note, you know. So, yes, the conductor can do that as well. I don't know. How many, just curious, I don't know, anybody a leader that's, that's taking this, that's looking today? Any of you leaders? Okay, one, two, no, kind of, <laughs> not really, okay. And I don't know about the other people who aren't, can't see, but um, I don't want to talk too much about being a leader because there might not be leaders, but I would just say this. It's really important that as a group, if you're chanting together, like shoulder to shoulder, be shoulder to shoulder, not too far away from each other. Make a curve, make a semicircle or a circle, because that's the best way for, for, um, for sound to come forth into a room, is if, you're, if the voices are coming in a semicircle or a, a circle is great too. What else? Um, um, no, no, looked at, have, have looked at the, um, the service beforehand, Everybody, not just the leader. So you, or have, you know, if you're doing orthros and you have like, for example, ages, you know, make sure you look for it, look through it before you get to church so that you you know what's coming ahead, what mode's coming, what book is needed. If it's just the leader that's doing that, it, it still will be kind of messy up there. So the more people that can be prepared, the less train wrecks we'll have. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. So I'll show ages really quick. So this Great. is. Um, you can just search for ages digital chant stand in Google and um, this is what it looks like when you come to the first page and then we'll go to uh, let's go to the Sunday so you can kind of see what happens on a Sunday so they have um, what we usually look at this one I think um, I usually do the PDF print okay that one too. but this one's good because this one shows the music this is what people might look at before they leave home. Like if mm -hmm. you're looking ahead, 
and you want to look at the notation, they have it in Byzantine and Western here. And so you would click on that and then it will pull up the God is the Lord. And then you come down to, okay, I'm going to need to learn the hymn for the Sunday. Well, that's the resurrectional one. So you'll, you should already have that one, but the special one for the hierarch. And so that's how you pull up those things. And if you do, as Presbyteria said, want to print, um, I think it's this one. Uh huh. And some parishes I've noticed um, will print, you know, 20 copies of these and have them available mm -hmm. for Orthros. Mm -hmm. You can always skip, you know, a page if you don't want to print every page. You could just start with this page. Um, but anyway, this, so people can follow along with Orthros. So it's a really nice resource. And it's good. Also, maybe you don't use this translation. Maybe you use a different translation, but you want to check your order because, mm -hmm. again, you don't you don't read this book yet. Um, so this is a good place to check your order and make sure that you're chanting the hymns in, in the right places and for the right saints. Great. Thank you, Tomaina. That's wonderful. So um, I don't know. Should I talk any more about the round of chanter stand or no? I think that's enough. Well, we had one question you could answer. Oh, okay. um, we'll see if there's any other questions about being around the chanter stand. But another question somebody said is that, you know, sometimes it's just me chanting and maybe one other person. And I wish we had more chanters. Like, how, how do we get people interested? How do we do mm. recruitment and bring okay. more people to the chanter stand? Good. So the first thing that I would say that I've come to believe, and I know it's just the truth, is if you want something, then you need to ask God for it. So pray about it because he's the one that makes things happen in our lives. So that's number one. Number two, look like you're enjoying what you're doing. <laughs> um, be prepared. Make it sound nice. Make it desirable for others to join you. Be a warm person. Be a loving person. Invite people personally. That's a really good thing. Just invite people. If you find out that people read music and have a good voice, I generally tend to just ask them because there's just not that many of us around. So um, does that answer that, Tomaida? Uh, yeah, Irene, any, any other follow-up thoughts on that? <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. It's hard, it's hard to grow a choir. I have a hard time growing my choir. We've kind of stayed at a dozen. I can't get to 14. And it's hard, but for me, it's harder to get men that actually read music. Um, but it's, it's always a work in progress, and somehow God does provide these things, but I do think we need to be asking him to help us um, so that we're not just feeling like we're doing it alone. So that's what I would say. I would ask the priest if he knows anybody that chants or that sings and then maybe is kind of holding back for some reason. Because um, sometimes he knows people that are like, yeah, I know someone, but he's being shy, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a place to go to. Um, can you say the original question that um, was asked before I went into the around the chanter stand? So that was about the mood sometimes about around the chant stand being anything but exalted and elevated. Do you okay. have any tips on maintaining a spirit of worship while still mm -hmm. being attentive to technical issues? Yes. So that's why I read that first thing that I was reading is because I want us to believe in what we're doing, that I'm worshiping. I'm being changed. God is making me holy. I mean, when we start really realizing what's happening, then I think it helps the whole mood around us. Uh, it says here that we must have a feelings of, where did I just write it? This is interesting. Let me read this to you. The Eastern Fathers have said many illuminating things about the great value which psalmody, chanting hymns, has as a means of inner purification and growth, of opposing and eliminating negative, useless, undesirable thoughts, as well as negative, undesirable feelings, which they call passions, and of eliciting and nourishing the positive, higher, desirable thoughts and feelings. So we have to, help, we have to allow chant to change us and when we change ourselves we know what Sarah, what saint seraphim says it changes a thousand souls around us right so we have to be concerned about our own humility at the chanter stand our own prayerfulness our own watchfulness while still being loving and caring for the people around us 
that's very difficult and I know it's a tall order, but I do believe the more we practice that, the, it improves the spirit of the people around us. So, any other questions? Well, we're getting towards the end. So okay. in, in a minute here, I'm gonna mute, unmute everybody and people can ask a few more questions okay. um, audibly. Um, but I did want to ask one question um, that I know that others have had that we've talked about, and I just want to voice it for those who aren't here but may watch later. And that is, you know, if I'm learning to chant and I want to, you know, right now I'm, I'm doing the notation, and I'm, but I'm noticing that like every time we chant from text, you know, my choir leader has to go to somebody else, and I want to grow my skills in that way. I want to be able to chant from text. Mm. Can you give some recommendations about how to progress there? Mm, that's really good. So as you are learning to chant, for example, orthros, you're going to start taking note of the prosomia that you're chanting from, which melodies are you're chanting. And you have to actually learn to memorize those melodies so that you can plug them in to other texts. So it's important that we're, like if you read, how many of you read music just in this four or five that I'm, okay, um, good. So as you're um, preparing to, and you're chanting those special melodies called prosomia, there's different ones, idiomala, stuff like that, but prosomia are the ones I'm speaking about. You are going to, you need to learn them and then you need to practice that same hymn in a text form and you need to practice that melody on that text. You have to make sure it's metered, right? And that's really the only way that I know of learning how to chant from text is to know the melody in your mind and then apply it to a text around you. A great example would be the Maneon from Holy Transfiguration Monastery. Um, beautiful, beautiful set of books that are indispensable for me and the choir. Basically, it says the name of the hymn above it and then you intone it. For example, um, oh yeah, the soldiers from infancy didst thou cleave to God, O oh God bearer, becoming the good spirit's most honorable mm -hmm, bubble vessel, and thou didst subject the whatever it is. Um, oh no, that's the soldiers standing guard. Excuse me. From infancy didst thou, sorry, I started with the wrong hymn, but as you learn the hymn and you chant it, then you're going to be able to do it perfectly in the little asterisks. What was that one? What was that one? The soul, what melody was that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking of, um, from infancy mm -hmm. didst thou, dun, dun, da da dun, dun, ba, da. Oh, all out of mart martyrs? No. Oh, martyr, whose praise is sung by all, undergoing tribulations and unbearable torments, thou didst bravely overcome that most cunning serpent, and didst cast him down in shame. Beneath thy comely feet, O oh, wise Conan, who art glorified of Christ, and with fervor thou beseechest him, that he grant peace and great mercy to our souls. So you got to have the right melody in your brain, like I did in the first one, but anyway. And then you apply it to the text. And that's really the only way that I know of learning these melodies. I know that some people don't even know how to read music, and they can do that. And that's really what the chanters from Greece do. They don't, they don't read from music usually. They're just... Um, They've had the, the, the melodies in their mind and they apply them to these big, beautiful red books. And that's why I like using the red books because it reminds me of a feeling like I'm a chanter in Greece. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and Sarah made the comment that Holy Transfiguration Monastery has a CD of the most common prosomia. Yes, that's what I was going to say. So the prosomia yeah. are available either, I think that you would get them through Ages, through Father Seraphim, or through Holy Transfiguration's prosomia book, and you can get that companion probably right from their website. I don't know where else it's available. Yeah, um, they, yeah, they have the CD. And one thing that um, I know somebody in our choir has done, and it might be available elsewhere, is that if there's a 
comparison chart that has the title that Father Seraphim uses and, and the title that Holy Transfiguration uses. Yes. So mm -hmm. that you can reference across those because maybe you learn it with the Father Seraphim music and then you get to the Menan and it has the Holy Transfiguration title and you don't know right. what it is. So right. I've had that problem myself. So it's really yes. helpful. Yes. Any Good. other questions there? So let's unmute everybody. We have just a few minutes left and go ahead and ask your questions if you'd like. And you can mute your own mic if you're in a noisy place and you don't want to say anything. I just unmuted all of you. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? So go ahead, Ty. Okay, no questions there. Um, I don't know your name. You're in the middle of my screen. C-I-I-B-O-R-E-D. -C What's your name? Kay. Oh, Kay. Kay, yeah. Yeah, do you have any questions? Um, I guess other than trying to locate the resources you spoke of, um, to see if that works to help learn those melodies, because really without that basic knowledge, it's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. It's humongous. Yeah. So like, are you starting off? What is your position? I, I by default, am kind of our head chanter. At what church? Uh, St. Geralimo's Church in uh, Peoria, Arizona. It, it was Father um, Pallet? Yes. Okay, great. And so by default, because... It just, as you mentioned earlier and several others, it's very difficult to get people to come yeah. and chant. Mm -hmm. You and chant mostly in Greek or mostly in English? Uh, mostly in English, although we do some things in Greek, but that's all scored. You know, Father Michael is a composer, so he scores our, our music. All of it? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Okay. So and what's your biggest challenge? Um, since I have no training uh, and did not grow up with listening to Orthodox music, um, learning the uh, melodies that you spoke of would be a great service to me because usually during Holy, you know, Holy Week, we switch from mostly scored music that's provided to us to a massive amount of chanting, um, you know, once a year, which is very difficult. Uh, when you're not doing it all the time. Chanting is something that you do by doing, not right. reading about it or listening. And how do you feel about your, your voice? You feel comfortable about how you sing? Well, it is what it is. Do people come to the services? Uh, we don't have a great attendance for matins usually. Okay. Um, so the good thing is if you feel like, you know, you didn't do it perfectly, you're not, you don't feel so self-conscious, you're willing to learn and grow through this, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And Kay, did, I, I know Prez is thinking about that, but I, I, uh, you had some questions about sinus issues as well. Oh, they pretty much fight that all the time. Oh, yeah. I, have, I have a big little segment on that. Would you like to hear about that? Absolutely. Okay, let me talk about that. So um, these are some sinus helps. I think one of the biggest challenges besides learning the music and learning how to read music and knowing the order of the services is just physically singing. It's really difficult for a lot of us. Um, a lot of us suffer from allergies and we're, I have, I'm in one of the highest allergy city of the nation. Portland is very high in allergies because of all the mold. So we really struggle. So I have over the years developed some um, ways of combating this. So let's talk about mucus okay the body produces about let's see here i think it's about a liter of mucus a day so it's natural to have mucus in the body it's not helpful when it comes out when you're singing right there naturally should be a thin coat of of uh, mucus on the vocal cords that's healthy okay it's when it constantly comes down in the back they call that post nasal drip when it's dripping down from the sinuses into your throat while you're singing that's what we create creates the difficulty so it's very annoying. And um, so phlegm is when the mucus is thick. Okay. So the first thing we want to do to combat phlegm is to drink a ton of water. 
I mean, that's when people say eight glasses of water, if you want to combat phlegm for a, as a singer, you really need to do that. And you need to be really mindful the day before you're going to chant to make sure you're hydrated the day before. That will really help you. Um, and when you start singing, the vibration of singing loosens phlegm. So it makes it really difficult. So what I suggest is you have to really learn how to be warming up much more than you think you do. And, and during the week, don't wait till Sunday morning to start, you know, doing some warm-ups. Do it all week. In the shower is my favorite place because I have that warmth. I, get, I have a little bit of a, it sounds like a little cathedral in there. It's easy to chant. And I just do scales. Like, I'll do this. Uh, then I'll do the next note. I make it up. I'm just doing scales and scales and scales. And I try to do that about 10 minutes a day. It helps so much because it loosens constantly. That's that mucus that wants to come down and it, it comes down more frequently. And, and so you don't feel on Sunday morning so gunked up. The other thing is um, I treat bruxism. A lot of us, as we get older, we don't realize it, but we have a lot of tension in our jaws and in our heads, in our necks. Okay. Tension. I found out from an ENT who I went to, to see because I was struggling so much. He said, tension prohibits the mucus from flowing down the back of the throat. So it's worse if you're tense. So you need to learn to eliminate bruxism or not to actually not eliminate treating it. If you can go online and study this for me, I found a website that was wonderful. It taught me has to keep my mouth open a lot during the day. I'm like, I'm driving people are next to me and I'm like this, holding my mouth open because we have to counter the pressure that we put down. The jaw is a very powerful part of the body. Eliminate that tension. You have to counter it by opening the mouth. So I'm intentionally doing that when I'm watching TV, when I'm driving, before I sing, I take some time and I open my mouth. I make sure that there's no tension in my head. Right now, for those of you who can't see me, I'm actually massaging my head back on my neck, um, underneath my throat and my temples, because there's a lot of tension there, and that um, works against eliminating phlegm, okay? Another thing is you need to check your diet to see what the heck you're allergic to and see if you can start eliminating some of those things. Usually it's, it's wheat, it's grains, or it's dairy, but you might need to see a doctor and find out what that is and just address it if you, if you intend on being a singer. Um, some natural remedies. My favorite is Neil Med. Neil Med is a product you can get at Walgreens, any drugstore, Costco. It's a little bottle. It's like, it's like a neti pot. It's a clear bottle with a, with a black lid on it. It has a little hole in it. I like it better than the neti pot because I'm not having to go like this. You literally go, you fill it with warm, clean water, put the little natural saline uh, packet in there. You go over your sink and you squeeze it and the water goes in one nasal, one uh, nostril and out the other. And then when you do that, you go and you sniff a little bit. And then it starts breaking down some of the impacted mucus in your sinuses. It is wonderful. You can do it twice a day. Don't do it right before bed, but you can do it in the morning and the evening. If you get in the habit of doing that, you're going to start managing the mucus, which is wonderful as a singer. You actually start getting into a routine of, of managing this. That's the one thing. I love it. Highly recommend it. Tell all my friends about it. And then the second is just lemon or pineapple water. Just get a little bit of that acidity going to help break it down. When, when mucus comes up and you're chanting, don't cough. Better to swallow or just leave it there until the end of the hymn and then try to swallow it down. And then try to open your mouth. Make sure you're relaxing so it's flowing in the back of your throat because it's just part of, of our bodies. It actually helps us to keep healthy, all this mucus, right? But it's just irritating when you're chanting. And also, if you need to turn up the mic a little bit so you're not straining and singing really loud, you don't want to sing too loud because that's also going to cause more vibration and more of this mucus is coming down. So you might need to turn up the mic a little bit so that you're not, you're not straining. So these are some of the helps um, I have. If you have any questions about that, I'm a real big proponent of caring for this because it really is a challenge for people. I have a blessing, I'll just say it out there, to drink water before liturgy. 
I can't do it otherwise anymore at 53. I can't go through a liturgy without drinking a little bit of water, which really helps to hydrate. I swish it in my mouth. I just try to get some moisture. So halfway through the service, I'm not hacking and clearing my throat. So you might have to get a blessing for that as a chanter. So any questions on that? I just want to add, I know, Prez, you had recommended the CD um, a few years mm -hmm. ago. And so if you're... Yes. Um, uh -huh. If you're looking for ideas of how to warm up in the shower, you want to play this, um, you know, before you leave for church or in the car, this is a really great CD. And right. they offer it in um, different vocal ranges. Mm -hmm. Great. And so, I do warm up in the car as well, right before church. I'm warming up. I might do my pre-communion prayers and then I'm just warming up. So um, I know it's hard. Any other questions or... I think we, uh, yeah, we're, we've gone over our time, but um, everyone, thank you so much for your participation. I thought maybe we should close with singing something from Great Complin. Oh, um, lovely. Mm -hmm. what, what would you like to do? I have the book here so I can. Lord of the Powers. Okay. So we make up little booklets of all of our services. Um, I would love, okay, before, we, before I leave, you are welcome to email me at ikona at ikona.com for any more specific questions that you have, E-I-K-O-N-A at E-I-K-O-N-A.com. I'm happy to answer. If you ever want to talk to me, just ask me some questions or give me, come up with some strategies. I'm super, I'm super happy to do that. Okay. okay. Great. Thank and, you. Thank you for, uh, are we going to say goodbye after this? Yes. We'll do okay. that in a second. And I was also going to show people. Um, this is the Ikona website, and if oh, you're, yeah. thank you. So these are some of the CDs available, and a lot of these, um, like the the whole text for the Akathist Tim CD, uh, is the Holy Transfiguration um, version. So like this book matches the hymns on the CD, and a lot of the music that they've done in their most recent CDs is on Saint Anthony's. So if you want to learn some of those hymns uh, on St. Anthony's, these are great CDs for that. So, and then I'm going to pull that Lord of the Powers from our Great Compline book, and Prez can see it for us. Okay. You can chant along if you want, quietly out of mind. Lord of the powers, be with us for in times of distress we have no other help but you, Lord, of the powers, have mercy on us. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, please reach out to me if you want to um, get in touch with Presbyteta or um, also to give me feedback on how you felt this went and if you would like more resources like this in the future. So thank you. And thank you. God bless you all. Uh, hello, thank Pasca. Peace. Thank you. All right. Bye.